What about what happened on January 6th? What do you think what happened there? I don't really know what happened on January 6th. January 6th, the... The election day? No, election day was back in November. Do you... I don't even know what... Do you know about January 6th? No. So when I say January 6th, that means... Just... Nothing. I don't know. That's just a day to you? Yeah. Did you hear about the, the insurrection attempt at the Capitol? No. no. For almost everyone here, insurrectioning was a non-issue. It was the hearings themselves that were the problem. I think it's an abomination. It's just McCarthyism, it's a witch trial. It's a witch hunt. Uh, it is. Yeah, it's it like a, mo is. a mob of people coming together with pitchforks yeah. saying, and we can't have that. Yeah, with, with, a, with an agenda, here's the narrative we're pushing, and that's all we're pushing is our narrative. A mob of people with an agenda pushing an agenda. Yes. That, that can't stand in America. No. We should, we should have an investigation about a mob of people. <laughs> that's we something should. everybody would watch that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, Nancy Pelosi, she start, is very responsible for what went on then. She planned it. She, she planned what happened? I believe so. Why did she plan to get attacked by a mob of Trump supporters? Because she wanted to be able to blame it on the Trump supporters and have something bad to say about them. Shouldn't we investigate that? Uh, yes. So you must be watching the January 6th committee. <laughs> No. So what was it people were watching? 2,000 mules came out and it showed a lot of stuff. Uh, you've got 2,000 mules. And then this movie, I'm uh, 2,000 mules. 2,000 mules. Yes. 2,000 mules is a documentary by Dinesh D'Souza, claiming massive voter fraud based on some cell phone data and surveillance footage that's been lauded by Trump, laughed at by Bill Barr, discredited by fact checkers, and banned from even right-wing media because of its unfounded claims. You know, as you turn on Fox News, I have never mentioned that movie. Once. Somebody's pulling the strings. Who do you think it is? Uh, I, it may be Obama. You think Obama's pulling or the strings? Or it could be uh, Obama? George Soros. You think it's possible that Fox News doesn't mention 2,000 mules? Your theory, there's a giant conspiracy up on top in which they don't do it. Or the second theory is that movie's not credible. I know the movie's credible. Maybe sharing some of the committee's findings would break through this MAGA bubble. Rudy Giuliani was drunk the night of the election, and it was partially his idea to deny the election results. Buy it? I haven't seen that. You're the first source I've gotten on that. You haven't heard that at all? No. That Rudy was drunk that night? It's an election night. I wouldn't be surprised if anybody was, so... Yeah. You trust a drunk Rudy Giuliani? I'm not saying I trust a drunk Uli, I Ju a Rudy Giuliani. The question is, have you trusted yourself or other individuals that you were with under the influence of alcohol? I totally have. Then what's the difference? I am not the commander in chief in charge of the United States of America. Doesn't matter. Well, I think, that's a, I think that's an important detail. If no one was willing to turn on the hearing, I decided to bring the hearing to them. I first shared testimony from Trump's own acting attorney general, dismissing Trump's claims of voter fraud. I told him that the stuff that his people were shoveling out to the public were bull was bullshit. Like I said, you just can't be up 300,000 votes and then lose. No, but that's Trump's attorney general. Does that sway you at all? He's turned on him. He's been, he's been paid by somebody to shut his mouth. Everybody knows the election was fraud. No, no, he's saying the opposite. He's saying, he's saying the, the opposite? Yeah, he's saying there wasn't wow. fraud. That That's bullshit. Wow. Does it make you kind of change your perspective and your assumptions? It does. Yeah. So you're not going to go in there right now? Oh, yes, sir, I am. You are going in there right now to see yes, Donald sir. Trump speak? Yes, sir. Okay, cool. Well, good productive chat. What's your response there? I think it's true. You think Bill Barr is right? Yeah. Because he's talking about the fact that the election was stolen is yeah. bullshit. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So he says it wasn't stolen. Oh. No, no, no. Oh, yeah, no. it was stolen. You, you, you don't believe that? No. So yeah. who, who do you trust? Like Trump? Trump's family? I trust, I trust Trump. You trust Ivanka? Yeah, yeah, I do. I think she's very smart and very intelligent. Let me show you. This is what she said. How did that affect your perspective about the election when Attorney General Barr made that statement? It affected my perspective. Um, I respect Attorney General Barr. Um, so I accepted what he said was saying. I don't know that's not edited in any way. You don't believe she actually said that? Did, did she say it on Twitter? It almost don't even look like her. You don't think that? It could not be her. It might be one of those, what they got clones out there these days? You think that, you think that was a? <laughs> it might be a clone, yeah. It might be an Ivanka clone. <laughs> yeah. Hot take, uh, my friend. <laughs>
It's almost like you're confronted with it and your brain just does somersaults to figure out there must be some other some other she reason. Looks, she looks frightened. She does look scared, almost like yeah, she's she does. She's, she's been really caught. Frightened. What do you think? <laughs> I'm confused. A little bit. It's Obanka. His, his daughter. daughter. His daughter says she accepts what the Attorney General said, which is that the election wasn't stolen, that Trump lost. Well, is it a lie? I mean, if you listen to these people, yeah, it's a big lie. And I'm fearful you're gonna go inside there and he's gonna keep telling you that lie. Michigan. Yeah. <laughs> was there on January 6th. Oh yeah, Being, so was I. You were there January 6th? Yes. What do you say to people who say he shouldn't have been there on January it's 6th? It's ridiculous. It was the most beautiful thing I ever saw. Thousands, maybe a million people gathered, so quiet. It was a peaceful rally. January 6th. January 6th! <laughs> January 6th. January 6th! And when we walked up to the uh, Capitol building. Quiet. Yeah. Birds chirping, police officers screaming. No. No. No, I saw them sitting around waiting for the donuts. Some of them were attacked that day. They were. Did you not see the videos? <laughs> I couldn't watch it. You couldn't watch it, why is that? When we went home and we were watching on TV what happened, Yes. I said, turn that off, that is not what happened today. You didn't see any violence? No. But to be clear, when it was on television, violent images, you turned it off? I turned it off because it wasn't true. It wasn't an accurate depiction of what was going on that day. What, what was it? Was it like a magical CGI George Lucas shit? Oh, well, yeah, could be, I don't know. Did I just give you I one? Have... You're like, well, that's an easy out, I'll take it. I'm not gonna talk about all this. I had hoped this crowd would want to keep discussing real issues and not get distracted by conspiracies, but people had some thoughts. I'm not going to be a conspiracist or anything like that, but I just watched a movie last week yeah. with Robin Williams in it. It was called Man of the Year. Man of the Year. And guess what? They had election fraud back then. The machines they were switching yeah. to doing it electronically, and they were counting wrong. Is this a documentary? No, it's, it's a just a movie. Are there any lessons we can take from Mork and Mindy? No. Who do you guys see as the current legitimate president? Uh, I don't think we currently have one. If we do, maybe hopefully Trump's running behind the scenes, keeping the military on our side. The recent attack that took out the leader of Al-Qaeda, who ordered that attack? I don't know, I didn't read a whole lot of that. I try to stay out of the media as much as possible because it's all a bunch of theatrics anyways, so. Yeah, and you're, you're, not, you're not somebody who gives in to theatrics. Right. Right. There's a huge push for normalizing pedophilia. How do they normalize it? Are they making pedophiles look cool? Well, if you go online, there's a whole list of pedophile symbols. Really? Yes. They're, they're like circular symbols. There's, tri there's a lot of triangles. There's colors. A lot of them are in pizza. Pizza related. Wait, like wait, ping pong pizza, like, for example, in is, is DC. A, that's a pedophile pizza? Yes. What, if I order a pizza, what images should I be uh, on the lookout triangle. for? A triangle would mean with, with a circle. pedophile made that pizza. Yep. From Pizzagate to Robin Williams Gate, this rally had everything because they're followers of this guy. Well, nobody's gotten to the bottom of 9-11, unfortunately. What don't we know about 9-11? I think it was all planned. I think that it came down on their explosives. It was an inside job. Yes, I think so. But I think Bush knew it was happening. Really? Is Biden just wasting time there? Biden doesn't know what he's doing. He recently just killed the head of Al-Qaeda. I don't believe it. Do you think that's just a, a made-up news story? Just like uh, bin Laden with Obama. Clarify who's still alive. Bin JFK Laden? Jr. is. JFK Jr. is still alive. JFK Jr. is still alive? Yes. Yeah. So, so I think JFK Jr. is going to try and expose globalists because they killed his father. I thought he was a magazine magnet who lived <clears throat> in New York. Yeah, I don't think so. Let's talk about John F. Kennedy Jr. But to help me do that, I want to bring in our first guest, Will Summer. Will's a politics reporter for the Daily Beast. And he's got a book coming out in February called Trust the Plan, The Rise of QAnon and the Conspiracy that Unhinged America. Will, welcome to Jordan Klepper Fingers, The Conspiracy. I'm excited to have you on. You are here to help me walk through and understand what is going on in this world of John F. 
Kennedy Jr. And I will say this, I, I go out on the road and I start hearing people talking about JFK Jr. And initially I'm thinking, oh, they're talking about JFK. There's a long history of conspiracies with JFK. And then I'm putting together that it's JFK Jr. And then I start to see signs up. I start to see bumper stickers that have him as vice presidential candidate to Donald Trump. And then a month or so back, I go to a rally in the Midwest and I'm hearing sweet old grandmothers talk about John F. Kennedy Jr. And I, I can't make heads or tails of it. Can you can you set out a little bit of where this began? What do we need to know? Sure. So, I mean, this is really bizarre, uh, as you noted. I mean, the origins of this are within QAnon. Um, of course, there was the this figure Q who was giving these anonymous clues. And then at one point in 2018, Q sort of vanished for a month on the forums where the, the clues came out. And then someone named R shows up and starts saying, you know, all of this is really about JFK Jr. And so that's kind of where the where it begins. And eventually Q comes back and kind of says like, this JFK Jr. stuff's garbage. You know, what have you been tricking all my people? Um, but the JFK Jr. stuff really starts there with this idea that JFK Jr. faked his death to take on the deep state and help Donald Trump sort of bring about this sort of QAnon utopia. There's a conspiracy inside the conspiracy. It's a, it's a, it's a conspiracy turducken right now. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it, it's sort of a splinter faction and you get this situation where like the, the kind of the mainline QAnon people will often be like, oh my God, like, you know, all, I believe all this Pizzagate stuff. I believe this about Hillary Clinton, but these JFK Jr. people are embarrassing us. They just believe totally stupid stuff. <laughs> That's the dynamic you want there. We're like, oh my God, can we just go back to serious things like talking about how the Democrats drink baby's blood and all this JFK Jr. stuff? We're losing credibility, people. We're losing credibility. Put your tinfoil hats back on and let's march. Yeah, I mean, basically they're saying, you know, these JFK Jr. people are almost like a, a government op meant to embarrass QAnon. But really this belief has in J JFK Jr. has persisted ever since. So, so well, what was ours intention in this situation like initially that jfk jr one is alive so perhaps he faked his death and two he's aligning himself with donald trump it feels like there's four steps there that i'm having a hard time <laughs> connecting why jfk jr and let's start with why he's alive and why that should matter Sure. So the arc that is presented by R, and, and, and I want to point out here that Q, R is the letter after Q. And so that's sort of the explanation for this. Is it? Name. Or is it, Will? <laughs> Your mainstream elitist alphabet says it's the letter after Q. But... <laughs> I have I only if you're moving forward through time, but that's a whole nother podcast. Exactly. So, so the the sort of the the story that's laid out is that John F. Kennedy, the father, is killed by the deep state. You know, in 1963, JFK Jr. sees this and says, oh, man, the deep state might come for me and I want to get revenge on them for murdering my father. And so for years, he builds up this relationship with Donald Trump, you know, because they were both sort of these New York socialite figures. There are pictures of them together. And so this is used to suggest that they were like best buddies. Then in this storyline, JFK Jr. fakes his death in this plane crash to sort of go undercover and sort of lay the groundwork for the, the QAnon journey and eventually emerge. For a while, they thought he was going to replace Mike Pence in 2020 on the ticket sure. and that he would sort of kind of help Trump and sort of get this final revenge on the deep state. So in this world, they see JFK Jr. as faking his own death to exist undercover and wait for the right time, still maintaining a relationship with Donald Trump throughout all of this? Or did, or did Donald Trump just come about and become sort of an avatar for JFK Jr.'s ascension? Yeah, that, that's a great question. I mean, a lot of it is a little contradictory and not super thought out. Uh, you, you know, that might surprise you, I know. But, but basically, the, the idea is that, you know, back in the 90s or, or the 80s, they kind of cut this deal. And they said, Donald Trump said, man, this stuff is really messed up, you know. And then and JFK Jr. said, tell me about it. You know, they shot my dad. And so then they sort of teamed up and, and JFK Jr. went into hiding. <laughs> tell me about it. They shot my dad. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, you're right. This is messed up. I found out that there is a group above the president and they're called the Council of Foreign Relations. Who's on the council? It is the like the secret council. But, but, but who are they? I know. They're like... No, I don't though. I know. But no, I don't. Neither does anybody else. Those Jewish bankers, they're trying to screw us. We're swimming in that anti-Semitic land, right? You're a slave, you're a slave. You're a slave, you're all a slave. You see Republicans on one side and... The devil on the other. Are we talking metaphorical devil, like, oh, they do bad stuff? No, literally, you know, 
vampire drinking blood. I don't want to nitpick here, but vampires tend to be eternally youthful. And I look at Nancy Pelosi, and she's a lot of things, but I guess I don't think vampire. Somebody in her party definitely drinks blood. In this world, the conspiracy theory is Hollywood liberal elites and Hillary Clinton are murdering children in ritual sacrifices, harvesting the, the chemical compound from human children, drinking their blood to ingest adrenochrome because it has some sort of elixir of life properties. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Okay. And you're telling <laughs> me it may not be true. If, if we trace back this specific uh, theory, even the origins of adrenochrome, does it go back before Hunter Thompson? Does it go back before it becomes sort of um, pulp in, in modern culture? Is, is there a history that dates back even, even, even earlier? It definitely does. And the way that it dates back is a little bit of um, sort of associative thinking. Um, so conspiracy theories often work this way. They kind of jump on to things. They have a very lazy logic. They jump onto things that are already um, fully formed. One of the conspiracy theories that is attached to adrenochrome or that adrenochrome is, is basically drawing on and modeling itself on is blood libel which is a conspiracy theory dating back to the Middle Ages that Jewish people um, drink or use the blood of Christian children for their religious rituals, specifically at Passover. And For the record, is, we don't do that. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it, <laughs> thank you, Matt. Thank you for thank, context. Thank, thank you for, for, for yeah, specifying that. Um, it's, and it's designed specifically to incite violence. Like that is what blood libel is for. So there's that kind of thematic connection. But then there's also the fact that the main purveyors of adrenochrome, like Alex Jones, like Liz Crokin, say that it's blood libel, say that it, it actually dates back to that. And if you look at these adrenochrome memes, one, one sort of popular one that goes around has this very obviously medieval image of a baby being drained of blood with people standing around it. And it says at the top, why does this image even exist? And the image is of Simon of Trent, which is the most famous and well-documented blood libel. And it, it's the this particular blood libel started um, Passover 1475. A father had come to the bishop of Trent and said, my two-year-old son Simon is missing. And this this bishop already had a story ready to go. Um, he decided it must be the Jewish community, the very small Jewish community in Trent. He had a couple reasons for, for wanting this story to be true. One, he felt like the Pope was too soft on the Jewish people and that he was too cozy with them. So this was his little power grab in opposition to the Pope. And then also, if you had a saint, if, if he could prove that Simon was martyred by the Jews, um, if you had a saint in your town, that was a huge money-making opportunity. Like you could get people from all around to make pilgrimages to your little altar, and then you would make money basically off of like brand um, brand building. And so <laughs> it was. It, it was like that the brand era's building opportunity. Yeah, it was like there that era's cheesecake factory. If you yeah, had yeah. if you had a cheesecake factory <laughs> in town, you know you're going to get people from the suburbs who are going to come in. They're going to pay some money. It's going to help the town. That's the thing. And he wanted to kind of put Trent on the map. And so even before they start any kind of trial or anything, they round up the the Jewish community, the entire Jewish community, and imprison them. And he hires a physician to write this very inflammatory autopsy that talks less about Simon's body and more about the, I think the phrase is, dry-throated Jews howling for Christian blood, like this really over-the-top kind of autopsy. And then he takes this autopsy Wait, this, and- that was the doctor? That was the- That was the doctor. Some, that's, some, that's some really high-end literary anti-Semitism. <laughs> yep. And he, well, it gets more high-end because then he takes this and he sends it around to poets and to artists and is like, make stuff from this. And they do. Like the poets start writing poems about Simon of Trent and the, the woodcutters start making images. And that's the image that shows up in that adrenochrome meme is this sort of propaganda campaign by this Italian 
bishop who decided he really wanted his own little ritual cult. Those f***ing woodcutters. <laughs> they just will take money, whoever puts it out. Where is the artistic integrity in 15th century woodcutters? <laughs> they, they, you know, I, I hold them in such high regard. I love them. I think it's the best century for woodcutters. And yet they are so yeah, willing to go. turn a blind eye to the social responsibility of being a woodcutter in that time. They're taking <laughs> dirty money to put out anti-Semitic propaganda. Shame, shame on them. I'm never... <laughs> I'm never buying 15th century woodcutter <laughs> art again. I landed in beautiful Budapest, Hungary. It's been home to everyone from composer Franz Liszt to inventor Erno Rubik, creator of games for the world's loneliest children. It may be one country over from an active war zone, but Hungary is a world capital of art, music, and culture, and I was fitting right in. But right now, they're also embracing right-wing nationalism, which is why American conservatives are so enamored with Hungary. When I arrived, it was a national holiday, basically Hungary's version of July 4th, except with more fingers intact. Today's the Revolution Day. It celebrates in 1848 when they pushed back against the Habsburgs, and I should have bought a guidebook instead of trying to watch Tenet on the plane. What happens in Tenet again? There was an election underway, so even though this was a national holiday, Prime Minister Viktor Orban was using the event as a political rally. In the 12 years since he took power, Viktor Orban has reshaped the country's judiciary, built a fence along the southern border to keep out refugees, turned Hungarian billionaire George Soros into a boogeyman, and was even sanctioned by the EU for his treatment of the LGBTQ community. It's no wonder Steve Bannon called Viktor Orban Trump before Trump. And as my therapist will tell you, I've been to a ton of Trump rallies. So I brought along a trusty translator to see just how similar an Orban rally is to a MAGA rally. First stop, the merch table. Do you have any Orban? pictures, specifically with him shirtless, riding a velociraptor, Tyrannosaurus Rex. A T-Rex, just the flags, that's basically a Hungarian reference. Does that have any profanity on it whatsoever? No, it's just a, just a, straight just flag? a straightforward flag. <laughs> Good luck with the sales today. To. You don't need to say that one. Merch, check. Lock her up. I thought I heard lock her up. Okay, maybe some things are a little lost in translation, but still, chance, check. Are there going to be any Let's Go Brandon chants here? Uh, Do you know Let's Go Brandon? I, uh, I see signs. Do you know Let's Go Brandon? Okay, so it's, uh, people were chanting, it was at a NASCAR. Do you know NASCAR? NASCAR. NASCAR. It's like Formula One, uh, but it's in a circle. Uh, it's more America. boring. They might shout different slogans. It's a way to disparage the President of the United States. But some similarities with Trump fans are universal like blind devotion. What do you think of Viktor Orban? Orban Viktor, like you are really. The most exquisite of all of us. You sound like a Trump supporter. They also had shadowy villains they could blame for everything. There is somebody who's behind the scenes. I don't want to name names. He's in the US. Somebody who's pulling the strings. Any chance that person who's pulling the strings name rhymes with Gorge Boros? Yes. That I understood. And unsurprisingly, Orban and Trump supporters were in lockstep in one area. What's the opposite of support? It, they're not the opposite. Somewhere. I, it's a personal issue. You don't have to bring intimacy to politics. It's a personal issue that should be uh, agreed upon by the majority as to what those personal folks with their issues should be able to do. Yes, and uh, I think if they don't like it here, they can um, travel to the other country where they can uh, marry each other and uh, adopt children and so on and so on. If you want equality, hit the road, Jack. I think yes. And if Hungarians do want legal protections for the LGBTQ, they need to GTFO. Because during Viktor Orban's time in office, he's barred gay families from adopting, 
passed a law prohibiting their depiction in children's books and TV, and even outlawed same-sex marriage in Hungary's constitution. So basically, they're fine with you being gay as long as you live your life as a straight person. Somewhere between the castles and bigotry, I'm starting to think Budapest might be the Orlando of Europe. And nowhere is that more apparent than in their hatred of one old man. A Biden ott alkalmatlansága lehet ebből a szempontból probléma, hogy egy szenilis megválasztanak. De igazából az a kérdésem, ki az a, a, melyik ország az, aki egy 86 éves aggasztyánt megválaszt? It amazes me. We immediately get to Sleepy Joe here in <laughs> Budapest. I gotta say, I think when this thing airs in America, be ready, you're gonna get calls and be speaking at the next CPAC. 